it was through. Since when has it possible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, Sunday's empty too. Since when has it possible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Up in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire. Stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Yeah, resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to do. Just as the man who was thrown on the there's anything that he can't do just as the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden what happens when God says to move I feel him moving it now I feel him doing it now I feel him doing it now doing it now doing it now, doing it now. Yeah. this is the sound This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling.
Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home, come home. I'm going to be in Psalm 103 today. It's one of my favorite passages of Scripture in the Old Testament. I'm going to begin with verse 1, but I'm going to skip around a little bit, so just bear with me if you're following along in your Bible. And as you're turning there, let me mention that a family contacted me who has two hospital beds they're willing to give away. Uh, one of them is, is a Cadillac. It's top of the line, fully uh, automated. The other one is a Model T. You have to crank it to get it where you want it. Uh, but both of them are available. If you or somebody you know would have need of a hospital bed, uh, they just need for somebody to come pick them up. No cost. Just come, come and, and uh, receive them as gifts. And um, so if you're interested or you know someone who may have such a need, you can get with me after church. Uh, you can text me. You can email me. You can call me. You can knock on my door. <laughs> Just let me know. Let's pray. Lord, as we turn to the, the Psalms today, and as we consider this particular passage of Scripture, we pray, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would make this word live in our experience. Um, I know that there are people who could come into this place and do a dramatic reading of this passage and uh, be impressive just with the reading of it. Much more impressive than my reading skills. But Lord, this is not about drama in that sense. This is about real life connection. And so we pray that your Holy Spirit would come and do in our hearts what a dramatic reading would never be able to accomplish. Lord, just use the pure truth of this passage to bring us home to yourself, that we might receive today that call that comes softly and tenderly from your heart to our hearts. Lord, there's somebody here, I have no doubt, who needs to come home to you this morning. Let this be their morning. Let this be their moment. Let this be the time that they hear this psalm in a way that they've maybe never heard it before. And Lord, thank you. As we spend the, this time together, we recognize, Lord, this is not just about having an event. It's not just about being entertained. Lord, this is about lives finding healing and forgiveness and deliverance and strengthening as you reach out your loving hand. Thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. O oh, my soul, all oh, my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The wind blows over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. 
and his righteousness with their children's children. What a great psalm. What a great reminder that everything we need, we can find in the hand of our loving God. It is absolutely the truth. If you've ever been healed and you know that it was from the hand of God that that healing came to your experience, can I hear you say amen? Amen. If you have had your sins forgiven and you know that they're forgiven because of the witness of the Spirit in your life, because Romans 8.14 says, as many as have the Spirit of God, they have the Son of God. And if you know as a fact that you are forgiven of your sins, would you say amen? Amen. If, If you know that His redemption has come to your life. In other words, he has bought you back from destruction and brought you to an existence that is glorious, even heavenly. One more amen. Amen. It's amazing. The psalmist is assuring us that there is nothing that could ever happen in our lives that is beyond the touch of God. How important it is that we know that, that we understand that, that we receive that in our lives. As Tony prayed in his prayer, We don't always understand the moving of God. He may not do it the way we think it needs to be done in the timing that we think it should happen. But ultimately, over and over again, God has proven that He is always moving in our lives in such a way that we might have the fulfillment that He has chosen for us just because He brought us into existence and loves us. And so with the psalmist this morning, we praise the Lord, not just casually, but passionately, not just haphazardly, but with, with, a, with an, a, a holiness that moves within us, within our souls. We say, Lord, we just want to praise you with everything that is within us because we recognize that your goodness has been poured out in our lives. It is amazing to understand that God forgives sins. All have sinned, the Bible says. No one is righteous, not one. The Bible declares that every one of us of Adam's race have fallen short of the glory of God. What did God do? God made a way for us to be in relationship with Him, to be reconciled to Him, to be delivered from the very sin that had cut us off from His fellowship. Why? Because He loves us. He forgives us because He loves us. The psalmist says His forgiveness is higher than the heavens. The psalmist says, as far as the east is from the west so far has he removed our transgressions from us. In other words, when he sees us, he sees us in Christ as his redeemed children. He sees us as those who will one day inherit that heavenly reward that he has prepared for us. He does not see us in the midst of our transgressions. He sees us delivered from our transgressions. It's a glorious thing when someone forgives you. Amen? I mean, it is. It's just a glorious thing. There are some people in this world who ought to have ought in their hearts toward me, and some of them still do. Pray for them, okay? (laughs) That they'll forgive me. Forgiveness is a glorious thing. It's a wonderful thing when you come into the company of someone that you know has every right to cut you off, but rather than cut you off, they welcome you in. Now, a lot of you have heard this story, but some of you have never heard this story. So Becky, backstage, who's shaking her head, I'm telling this one for the ones that have never heard it. I was a a reckless kid at times, and one time me and a group of my friends went up and stayed on the side of the mountain. That side of the mountain belonged to my Uncle Wesley. He owned 40 acres that neighbored the National Forest, Jefferson National Forest, and Fincastle area in Botetourt County, Virginia. And we went up there to stay in my dad's camper that was parked not far from the place where my uncle was to build a cabin for he and his wife. Their kids were grown. They had grandkids. They had always wanted to live on this property that they had owned that we had all hunted for years. And finally the time was coming. He had cleared the spot and fenced in the spot where the house would go. And so we went up there, and Dad gave me permission to take a couple of uh, our, our rifles up there. We had a 32 lever action Winchester and a 30 30. Um, and so we took those two guns up there with us, and we uh, commenced to, to shooting targets and such. And, and uh, I was getting bored with shooting targets, and I spied 
a birdhouse that was perched on one of the posts. And there were birdhouses on a number of the posts around the perimeter where the house would go. And I said, you know, I'm a, I don't know. I don't know if, I, if I'm good enough shot, but I'm going to see if I can hit one of those birdhouses. Woo-wee. I had to 30-30, and I pulled the trigger, and that, it obliterated that birdhouse. And as soon as it did, I was a little bit taken back. I was proud. Now, I'm going to tell you, I was proud that I hit that, hit that thing from the distance I was shooting. But then in the same moment, I thought, man, I have re- there's no return. I mean, there is no picking up the pieces and putting this birdhouse back together. It, it, was, it was splintered everywhere. And then I handed the gun to one of my buddies, and he shot a birdhouse. And then we handed it off to another buddy, and he shot a birdhouse. And then I realized, my uncle's going to shoot me. (laughs) We're not going to shoot any more birdhouses. And I took the gun back, and we put it away. And and y'all, I I didn't go home and tell my dad, Dad, i got to tell you something. Um... We shot Wesley's birdhouses, three of his birdhouses, and there's no putting them back together. I didn't go confess. And um, I didn't call my uncle up and say, look, I messed up. I did a a crazy thing. I'm a juvenile delinquent, and I deserve my punishment. I should not. Y'all, I should not have done that. But I didn't confess to him. And so uh, the, the year of my senior year went by. I graduated from high school, I went off to college, I was in college two two years and then got married, and then married, moved to uh, the sun coast of Florida, Newport Ritchie, Florida, serving as a youth pastor, and Becky was directing the choir, and I was leading worship of all things. Can you imagine? Can you imagine me up here, you know, doing this number? And I got a phone call from Dad. Now, several years have gone by. Nothing's ever been mentioned. And my dad said, your Uncle Wesley and your Aunt Lodi and your Aunt Allie are coming through Newport Ritchie, and they want to stop and see y'all. So I gave them your address. They'll be there day after tomorrow. They're on their way. I I said what, what you're supposed to say. Well, we'll be glad to see them. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord. Now, I'd seen Wesley since this all happened. Nothing had ever been mentioned. And I'm thinking, I'm living in the, in the, in the fear that this is going to be brought up and he's going to have his say. So they come in, they visit, and we have, we have a good visit. They're not staying for supper or anything like that. They just said, we're just passing through. We just wanted to say hi to y'all and and congratulate you because they had not been able to come to the wedding and blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm just on pins and needles the whole time they're visiting. And as they're leaving, there was a sidewalk that went from our front door just straight out to the, to the curb, and they were parked on the curb, and I walked out with them, and Wesley's walking beside of me, an ex-Marine, <laughs> who was a... Re- who was a retired police officer, okay? So Becky's walking with my aunts, and Wesley and I are bringing up the rear, and he leans over, and he's a much bigger man than than I'll ever be, and he leaned over as we're walking down the sidewalk. He said, hey, Ronnie, just want to tell you, I know that the birdhouse escapade was a childish moment, And I just want you to know, I've long ago forgiven you. And so let's just let that be bygones. It's okay. Can I tell you that every time I saw my Uncle Wesley after that, the tension was gone. When the psalmist says, bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He forgives all my sins. To be able to come into the presence of God and know that he knows about the birdhouses. But he says, I care more about you than I do that moment in your life. And I'm willing to let that 
be in the past, to be as far as the east is from the west, if you will just receive the forgiveness I'm offering. And I'm going I'm to tell you this morning, if you're here this morning and you have any, any idea that I'm not forgiven, it's on your side, it's not on God's side. Because he's more willing to forgive you than you are willing to receive that forgiveness. And so, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if today, if you haven't already done this, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing today to leave the house of God and know that's over? No more awkwardness in the presence of the Father. No more wishing I had. All of us wish we had done things differently. Everybody does. But to be able to receive the forgiveness of God and say, you know what, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I can come into your presence without fear or without dread. Thank you that I can come before you knowing that your love is so full and free for me that you would not hold anything against me if I just honestly confess it and lay it before your feet. 1 John 1.9 says it plainly, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We don't have to live in the shadows of our transgressions. We can bring them to the Father and say a simple, sincere, humble, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want you to have your way in my life. And in that, he will bestow his forgiveness. And then he says, I praise the Lord with everything that is within me because not only does he forgive all of my sins, but he heals all my diseases. And immediately we think, well, I've known people who have died with a disease. But let me tell you, when they crossed over in Christ, when they crossed over to the other side, they left all that behind. He heals all our diseases. There is coming a day, y'all, when sweet Beulah land will be real in our experience. Oh, it's going to be glorious. Yesterday, we, Becky and I were driving back from Columbia, and I hit the, the button that you can say, hey, Siri, play. I said, hey, Siri, play. And she played it. And then after she played that Southern Gospel song by the Neyland Singers, another song came on. And then another song came on. And then an old quartet song came on. What a day that will be. And the person that was singing uh, the solo part of that old song sounded just like Beck's dad, Holmes. Those of you who heard, remember hearing him sing back in the day, I mean, it was that Holmes kind of voice. And we both listened to that song all the way through with tears streaming down. I said, man, I've never heard anybody sound more like your dad than that guy on that particular song. I said, I'll bet your dad listened to that very album in his time. And Beck said, oh, I know he did. I remember him playing that at the house. And as we're, as we're crying, thinking about Holmes and his, his voice and how we miss him singing in a church service where we're a part of that service, in the same time, we were rejoicing, realizing that that glorious day has already become a reality for him. And that whatever was going on in his body that, that finally took him from us into glory, that when he passed over, all of his diseases were healed in a moment. Every tear was wiped from his eye. Any frailty that had ever, ever been experienced in his, in his earthly existence was gone in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, he was changed, as the Scripture says. No wonder the psalmist is passionate when he says, Bless the Lord. He doesn't just say, Bless the Lord. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my inmost being, for he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. And then he says he redeems our lives. He crowns us with love and compassion. Not only does he love us, but he begins to make us a loving people to where we really honestly, genuinely care about what's happening in another person's life and not to exploit it for our own advancement, but we just care. One of the things that has happened for Becky and I 
in this grandparenting age. We'll just be out anywhere and we'll see a happy little baby and we're just like, oh, look at that, you know? Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to see and experience Wyatt Hardy in our church family, little fella, you, I'm telling you, he is just, he's just what you think a Gerber baby ought to be. I mean, he just is. But just, just God crowns us with love and compassion. It, it not only means that he is loving and compassionate toward us, it means he makes us a loving and compassionate person. If you have found yourself to be more loving since you invited Jesus into your life, can I hear an amen? I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. We honestly really care even about people we meet one time and never see again. That's a mark of God's touch on our lives. And then he says, I just want to praise the Lord because he satisfies our lives with good things. I talked about it last week. We've all had something that we thought we wanted, and then when we got it, we realized, ah, I'm, not, I'm not keeping this. Um, but when God satisfies us, it's with good things. It's, it's, it's a fulfillment that he brings to our lives. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it to the full or that you might have it abundantly. And the psalmist says, I praise the Lord with my inmost being because he has given me an abundance in, in life that has brought a satisfaction I've never found anywhere else. His love is as high as the heavens for us. And his forgiveness is without end. And then one of my favorite lines in Psalm 103. It's brought me comfort many, many times. In this version I have here this morning in, in 103.14, For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are the dust. In other words... Our frailties are completely understood by God. Things that we don't understand about ourselves, He understands completely. I remember, um, I remember when we moved in, we lived in a house back over here that's on the pond that's right in behind the church. And um, we had too many bushes put in around that house. Oh, they look good. But then came the day when they grew up and they had to be trimmed. And when we first moved in there, we lived there seven years. When we first moved in there, man, I, I'd tell Beck, you know, Saturday, Saturday morning, I'm, I'm going to go out and trim the hedges. And I'd go out and I'd trim the hedges. And I mean, by the middle of the day, I had them trimmed. I had everything picked up. I had everything bagged up. I, it was done. It was done. And then about the sixth year that we lived there, I told her, I'm going to go trim the hedges. And I trimmed a little bit, and I thought, man, I'm tired. And I went in after just maybe being out there an hour, and it was one of these days like we're having now, hot and humid. You done already? I said, I'm done for today. She said, I have never known you to not start something and finish it, because I've, I've, al I've always been that guy. If I'm going to start it, I'm going to get it done now, because it'll worry me until I get it done. I, I wish I weren't that way, but I am that way. Anybody else that way? And, and so, but y'all, I couldn't. I, I, I waited till another day, went out and cut a little bit more, and then I, um, I started understanding that man would earn his way by the sweat of his brow, and um, I started thinking about, okay, I'm going to take those bushes out. I'm, gonna get, I'm not going to take I'm going to get somebody to come and take those bushes out. Hey, Greg, <laughs> can you get your guys um, to come take these bushes out? What, what am I getting at? Human life, if you're not there yet, you will get there when there are frailties. 
and you can't do what you used to do. And we don't understand that sometimes about ourselves. And, and, and especially for some of us, it can get to the place where you even get a little bit depressed about you're not able to do what you once were able to do. Now, you young folks, you're, you're having a hard time with me right now. You're looking at your phones and, 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 and doing other things. But you're going to get there. Frailties will be realized in this earthly existence. And, and what he says here is powerful because he says God understands our frailties. God knows that we're made of the dust. God realizes that there's coming a time when the wind will blow over us, life, time, will blow over us, and we will be no more, and the people in that place won't even remember us. You think it won't happen, but how many times have you been driving down the road and all of a sudden you think about somebody and then you realize, man, they've been gone for 10 years and I haven't thought of them for a while. It's the nature of this earthly existence. But here's what's glorious. Listen to what he says. He says, the wind blows over it, blows over the dust, and it's gone, and the place where it was remembers it no more. Listen. But from everlasting to everlasting the Lord's love is with those who fear him. It's a poetic way of saying, God never forgets me. God forever gets me, understands me. He knows that I'm of the dust. And when others don't understand, when I don't understand, God gets me, God understands me, and his love never fails. It's from everlasting to everlasting, even when others haven't thought of me for a while. He never quits thinking of me. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that he has carved our names on the palm of his hand. He loves us. He loves us. He understands us. I, I got to tell you, you know, shooting the birdhouses happened in my young teenage years. And to this day, if you ask me, why in the world did you do such a thing, all I can, all I can answer is, I don't know. It just came over me and I just did it. And as soon as I did it, I wish I hadn't done it. Because I love my uncle, who's in heaven now. I love my family. I can't explain it. But the glorious thing is we don't have to be able to explain in order to receive his love and his forgiveness and his healing and his redemption in our lives. I've had so many people through the years say, Preacher, I'll tell you what, as soon as I take care of, then I'm going to start coming to church. Or preacher, I'd come, but I'm afraid the roof might fall in. Preacher, I'd come, but I know some people who go there, and they know the real me, and I just, it's just uncomfortable. I've heard it all. Nobody loves you like your heavenly Father loves you. It's time to put all of it out of the way. God, forgive me. God, heal me. God, redeem me. God, show me your ways. Pour out your love and compassion in my life that I might become more like Jesus in the every day of life. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from the pit. He pours out His love and compassion on me. He remembers that I'm frail. He knows everything there is to know about me and loves me anyway and forever. 
I will not walk away from God another second. As good as it felt to go and be in mom and dad's house when they maintained a household and sit at their dinner table and laugh together. And as much as I enjoy going to see dad yet today and spend time with him, as glorious as all of that is, and it is glorious, there's another kind of glory. When I walk into this sanctuary just in the middle of the week and there's nobody here and the lights aren't on, just the stained glass, and I walk in and say, I'm coming to you again. I want to trust you today like it's the very first time. And to be able to come in no matter what the history is, no matter what the regrets are, to be able to come in and say, Lord, I'm coming, I'm coming to you again. I'm coming home again. And to always have that welcome from him. When I know he knows. When I know he understands what I don't even understand about myself. It makes you want to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Lord, there's no one like you. There's no one like you. I want you to bow your heads for just a moment. As the praise team comes to lead us in a song, May I encourage you to just have a little talk with the Father. Just trust Him all over again today. With whatever is going on in the moment, just trust Him all over again today. Receive His forgiveness. Invite the outpouring of his healing presence in your life. Allow him to redeem your life. To bring you to a place of glory that he's prepared just for you. And then maybe just say with the psalmist in another place in Psalms, he says it like this. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgives me all my sins and heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction. Bless his holy name. Lost are saved, find their way at the sound of your great name. All can feel no shame at the sound of your great name. Every fear has no place. At the sound of your great name, the enemy, he has to leave. At the sound of your great name, Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain.
dead on her wrist at the sound of your great name. Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Your grace. 